Adirondack experience. I'm Mrs. Carl Nyborg. This is our second video in our two-part series about cooking with coconuts in the early 20th century Adirondacks. The coconut was an ingredient added for its decorative and social value. The 1916 cookbook I'm using is from Keysville, New York. The town advertised itself as the gateway to the Adirondacks. Their top attraction was the Osable Chasm. Wealthy tourists stayed at the Grand Osable Chasm Hotel, and many smaller hotels offered more modest accommodations. Keysville had several churches. The steeple in the background is the First Baptist Church. The ladies at this church created the cookbook. Some of the recipes included were appropriate to bring to social events, like this ice cream social in Keysville, but the recipe I'm using is for more special occasions. The cookbook includes this bit of original poetry. Our claim to excellence we base, in that these rules are each one tried, found wanting not, then in this case, the, our book will justify our pride. Within its pages, some rule you'll find to suit the most fastidious mind. Let's follow a recipe and test their claim. Now, coconut is only mentioned at the end of this recipe, but it is a statement piece of this dessert. The recipe makes around 50 squares. Now, I can't eat 50 squares on my own, so I'll make a half recipe instead. It's important to remember that cookbooks from other times differ from modern cookbooks. Writers in the early 20th century assumed a certain level of skill and understanding. For me, as someone from a different time, I needed to learn what was once commonplace. As I go along, I'll show you where I needed to learn these extra skills. These are all the ingredients I need to make coconut squares. All of them, except the fresh coconut, are easy to find in modern stores and are almost the same as what women had in 1916. If you actually have a lot more butter than just one tablespoon here that the recipe calls for, when you cream the butter and the sugar together, you'll actually be able to get it the texture and the consistency of cream. But because this recipe uses so little butter, all we're gonna, all we're really doing here is mixing the ingredients together. So as you see, this is kind of a light and fluffy mixture. This is a room temperature egg white. It actually beats up faster and is what women would have used in the early 20th century. And I'm gonna beat these to soft peaks. So we don't actually know much about the contributor of the recipe. We know Mrs. M.A. Thomas' husband held various positions around town and taught Sunday school, but sometimes a cookbook was the only place a woman's name ever got published. Now, Mrs. Thomas may have gotten the idea for this coconut squares recipe from the American Cookery Magazine by the Boston Cooking School. In 1910, they published a coconut squares recipe that uses the same ingredients, just in different proportions and in a different order from Mrs. Thomas' squares. But wherever she got the recipe, she changed it to suit her taste. I only want to do it till just incorporated. And because the sugar was still very grainy, a lot of the air came out anyway. This recipe uses sweet milk, which is actually just fresh whole milk. Something that was a problem was sour milk. Sour milk, just milk that's gone a little bit, builds up lactic acid and tastes sour. So what women would sometimes do is add baking soda into the sour milk to neutralize some of the acids and then it would be safe for baking. This would also activate the baking soda and make it nice and a fluffy cake. I suspect that Mrs. Thomas was familiar with this baking tradition when she instructed to put the baking soda in with the milk. This is actually starting to remind me of pancake batter. With the ingredients and the consistency, it's very watery. And since we're gonna bake it in a flat sheet, it kinda is just like a, a, a big baked pancake. You can just ever so slightly smell that vanilla right now. So here is our finished batter. So I'm going to put it into this nine by 13 pan that I've prepared. Now baking tins didn't come in standardized sizes, but by using this nine by 13 with this half recipe, I get a good height for the coconut squares. 
I have the bottom of this fan lined with wax quick paper because one tip in the back of the book says to save all paraffin paper from cracker boxes and cut up to fit cake tins. After a pan is greased, put a sheet of paper in the bottom and it keeps the cake from sticking to the pan. Now, wax paper, if you actually have it up over the edges, it's gonna catch fire in the oven. So you just wanna make sure that it, the batter completely covers it. I have the oven set to 350 degrees. And I'm gonna cook it for about like 10 to 15 minutes. The top should be a light golden brown color all across it. So the cake is out of the oven and cool. It has a nice golden brown. Now in 1916, the more well-to-do in Keysville would have owned a gas range, likely a Glenwood range. And the more modest homes would likely have had wood or coal ranges. Gas had the advantage of better temperature control, but temperatures still varied between ovens. A woman had to know her own oven in order to produce good bakes, which is partly why a good bake showed off a woman's status and skill. Now this was actually my first time using my new oven that um, I got last week, and it actually took five minutes longer to cook the cake than it did in my old oven. So even today, there's differences between ovens. So right now, I'm just trimming the edges square, and then I'm gonna cut it into two inch squares. Now, you can see this cake is a very open texture. It, it's really kind of a uh, rustic cake, but once you add the fancy frosting with the coconut on it, it turns it quite elegant. And because this cake was following several different baking traditions, it's not necessarily the, ex the texture you would expect today. There were recipes then of cakes that used the same ingredients where people would put the egg whites in at the end and add the baking soda with the dry ingredients, and that would actually produce a much lighter, even textured cake. Now that our cake is ready, it's time to start the frosting. Now the directions just say, make a boiled frosting with coconut in it. Because boiled frosting was something every home baker knew how to make in the early 20th century. The elements of boiled frosting are hot sugar syrup and beaten egg white. Today, if you were to search for boiled frosting on the internet, you would actually get recipes for Italian meringue, which is slightly different than historic boiled frosting. Um, Italian meringue is more fluffy. You can use it to pipe designs or create cloud-like effects on a cake. Historic boiled frosting created a smooth, unmarred finish on the cake. Now, this doesn't mean that every woman made frosting the same way in history. Some women might prefer a more Italian meringue consistency, while others wanted the smooth look. But generally, the ideal for cakes at this time was a smooth finish. For the frosting, I mix one cup sugar with a quarter cup cold water, and I'm gonna heat it on high until the sugar dissolves. Now, thread stage in candy making is between 224 and 239 degrees Fahrenheit. Thermometers in the early 20th century were not always accurate. Many home candy makers preferred to use a more traditional method for checking the temperature. Even though I'm using a modern thermometer, I'll show you the cold water method as well. Now while the sugar heats up, I need to beat one egg white to soft peaks. If I was actually going to be making Italian meringue, I would use two egg whites to one cup sugar instead of one egg white. And I would also heat my sugar up to the soft ball stage rather than the thread stage. So the first time I made this recipe by hand, I broke my whisk. So I turned to the rotary egg beater. In 1901, nearby Ticonderoga, New York, was selling egg beaters for 10 cents each, which was affordable for most families. So I'm going to be using this for the frosting. Now you have to be very careful when working with syrup. This is very hot. If it gets on my skin, it will cause severe burns. So let me just show you how to use the cold water method to check the syrup temperature. Got a little bit of syrup there, and I'm just going to set it in this very cold water and stick my fingers in so my fingers get nice and cold as well. And I'm gonna take some of the syrup and move my fingers apart. And if the syrup forms a thread, then I know that it is at the thread stage of candy making. If I were able to form this syrup into a soft ball, then it would be softball stage.
all the syrup is in now and you can see it's nice and glossy and I'm going to want this thick enough that it's going to coat the cake without like leaving marks but if I leave it too runny it's going to do what's called a literally run off the cake so this is starting to get thicker it's kind of reminding me of like Elmer's glue right now all right, I think that that's a good consistency. So I'm gonna ice the cakes while they're on this rack so that any extra frosting isn't going to pool around the cakes. It'll just drip right through. And you really need to ice these immediately because the frosting will continue to set um, after you've finished cooking it. So then what you do is you take your grated coconut. I'm just going to put it on the fronts Get some on the side as well. And as the frosting cools down completely, it will start to dry out and harden. Once it is safe to touch, it'll be ready to take to a party or a wedding or whatever special occasion you made them for. These white squares gave a message of exotic elegance. They showed that you had the money to buy an ingredient that was just for decoration. The techniques are labor intensive and showed that you had the, either the time to do it yourself or the money to pay someone else to do it. And the coconut itself was exotic. Even today with endless decorating options, sometimes a simple design can still give that same message of exotic elegance. Mm. Mm. Of course, the main flavoring in these cakes is sugar. They have a very open texture, and it really does feel like eating a pancake covered in frosting with coconut on top. And the fresh coconut, it doesn't, it's not all dried and hard. You can actually like bite into it like you would a nut. So it's very pleasant to eat, beautiful to look at, it just smells like a simple yellow cake. So make sure to check out our other videos from Adirondack Experience to learn more about the region in the past and the present.